today we're looking at and discussing the differences between a chip shot and a pitch shot. We're also going to be showing you exactly how to play each of those and when you should use them out on the golf course. So I'm sure you've heard the terms chipping and pitching, but you may well have questioned, you know, what's actually the difference between the two and when should I actually be using a chip shot versus a pitch shot? And we're gonna answer those particular questions in, in this video. Now, the reality of this is if you can hit all the shots that you need around the greens, you can hit a nice high shot, you can hit a mid-flighted shot, you can hit a ball which has got a low flight and rolls quite a lot, and you have all those shots available to you, it really doesn't matter what you call them. You call them Frank and Dave, it really doesn't matter. But when you're potentially uh, you know, searching for information online, on YouTube, um, it's kind of important that we know the difference because if someone's talking about a chip shot and you use the information in that video to apply it to a pitch shot, you might get some slightly indifferent results and we're gonna get some inconsistencies there. So we're gonna start off by looking at a chip shot. Now the definition here and what these shots are is my definition. It will change potentially if you look at different coaches, but this is how I distinguish between the two. So a chip shot for me is a shot that's played over a very short distance when we're looking at how far the ball carries. And for me, when we're talking short game, we are talking all about the carry distance. What the ball does after that is really down to the surface that the ball is landing on, the club that you've got, and the technique that you use. But you can see that the green here is only sort of one, so it's only three paces away from me. So for me to land this ball on the green, I really only need to carry it four or five paces. So because it's a very short carry distance, this would be for me a chip shot. Now a chip shot will generally, will change depending on the club you've got, but it will generally spend more time rolling on the ground than it will be flying through the air. A pitch shot is often very different. A pitch shot tends to spend more time through the air and less time rolling on the green. And that's a really quite a nice way of looking at those shots. Now, when I'm chipping, as we've just established, I'm chipping from very close to the green when the ball's only got to carry maybe a little bit of fringe grass or a little bit of rough. Uh, it lands on the green and then it rolls out, hopefully very, very close to the flag. Now, when I'm chipping, I'm gonna use a variety of clubs. I'm gonna use anything from my 60 degree lob wedge through my wedges through to potentially a seven iron. So I've got a lot of clubs to choose from and which club I choose is really going to be depending on what do I want the ball to do when it lands on the green? Do I need it to stop pretty quickly or do I need it to roll potentially right to the back of the green? So we're going to come to the club choice in a moment, but let's go through the technique. Everything I do here for this chip shot is to really guarantee the direction, guarantee the strike and give me the greatest chance of controlling those two things. So the first thing I do is I stand in much, much closer to the golf ball than I would do for a normal shot. The reason I do that is it allows me to raise the handle up and it allows me to set the toe of the golf club slightly lower than the heel. Now, when we do that, we get a slightly smaller profile of club interacting with the ground. It gives me greater chance of hitting the ball consistently. And it also helps me control where the golf club points. As I stand closer and raise the handle, the club face in this chipping motion rotates far less. If we use my hands as an example, if I put my hand here and the palm face that flag, as I make this movement, my palm pretty much always faces the flag. Therefore, control of direction is gonna be much easier. If I stand like this and my palm faces the target, now when I rotate, you can see how my palm opens up and it closes. So this would be a little bit more difficult for me to consistently control the direction. So as we stand in much closer and raise the, raise the handle, we are able to see the line a little bit better, more like a putt. We're able to control the club face through the motion. We're able to get a smaller profile of club interacting with the ground. And all of these things really help me with consistency. Now, the other little thing in setup here is I would want the ball to be slightly behind my sternum, that's the buttons on my shirt or the zip on your top, so slightly behind my sternum. And I would like to have my weight on the lead side. When I do those things, generally we're gonna get some forward shaft lean. So the handle of my golf club is slightly ahead of the club head. What that does is it gives me a slightly downward strike into the back of the ball. Again, helps me with consistency of strike and it helps me miss out any kind of debris behind the ball, whether that be longer grass or in this case, possibly a little bit of moisture because we're early in the morning. So that would be how I would tend to set myself up for a chip shot. In terms of the motion itself, 
once I've created that setup, I really want to feel it's coming from the upper body. So it's my shoulders rotating back, my shoulders rotating through, and I'm reacting with my lower body. You'll notice that my lower body is reacting to that I've got some rotation through my hips, some rotation through my knees, and if we could measure what's happening with my feet, there's a little bit of movement in there. But I'm not really doing a huge amount with my wrists. And the reason I'm not doing a huge amount with my wrists is because I only need to carry the ball three to four paces. So in my hands here, I've got a 52 degree wedge. Now I'm not specifically gonna go for that flag. We're just gonna kind of cover the differences between the clubs I would use. But if I took my setup here with that little 52 degree wedge and just played a little chip shot and landed it just on the front of the green, there's my little chip shot and it rolls out. Now you can see how that's significantly short of the flag. So in this particular case, 52 degree wedge probably wasn't the best option for me because I played the chip nicely, it landed on the green, I controlled those things I wanted to control, but it didn't have enough rollout. So what about if I took exactly the same setup, but I changed the club? So this time I've got a pitching wedge. Now pitching wedge has got less sloft, so we're gonna do the same little motion. Okay, and you can see that was a much lower flight, more rollout, finished much closer. So for me, from this situation to that flag, pitching wedge was probably the right club. What about if I now went into a seven iron? And I'm making sure you're gonna be able to establish what's going to happen here. I can take the same setup, so that shouldn't look a lot different to my other two setups. I'm gonna play the same shot. Much lower ball flight, land in the same place, but you can see how that ball's rolling much, much further. And again, similar to the 52 degree wedge, that seven iron isn't the right shot for this particular flag, but we can see the difference in what I've been able to produce with really taking the same setup and having the same motion, but by changing the tool that I'm using. As the loft gets lower, the flight gets lower, the rollout tends to be increased. So really with chipping, I'm pretty much gonna use one technique one setup, one motion, but I use different clubs to make that ball do different things when it lands on the green. And with the tools that I have in my bag, even just with that one technique, I really should be able to get pretty close to wherever that flag is on the green. So that is what I would class as a chip shot. I play it from very, very close to the green. I use a variety of clubs, and I pretty much want the ball to spend more time rolling on the ground than I do through the air. So now let's move to a different situation and go through what I would class as a pitch shot. So now I've come to a slightly different position. Now, I was only just up by the front of the green there when we were talking about a chip shot. So I'm not that much further away, but I've changed the angle a little bit and you can see how the shot that I'm faced with is a little different. Now I'm on the apron here, this fringe grass, and it's actually quite short grass, so theoretically I could put through this, but we've probably got 65 to 70% of the total distance covered by this fringe grass and then I get to the green. So if we were to sort of look at the shot that I would ideally want to hit here, it would fly through the air, land on the green, and then it would need to stop a little shorter. So this shot, if we're seeing it that way, would have more time through the air, less time on the ground. Therefore, this shot for me would be a pitch shot. And it therefore requires a different technique. Now, when it comes to pitching, unlike chipping, I'm probably going to be using one to two clubs in my bag uh, as, a, as a rule. I've got my 56 degree in my hand here. I've also got my 60 degree there. And those are pretty much the two clubs that I would tend to want to pitch with. So what I have to do with my pitch shots is I have to then be able to adjust my technique to give me the desired outcome. Chipping, we kind of said we wanted one technique and we use varying clubs. What you'll find if you look at the best players, they generally tend to pitch around the green with one of their wedges, maybe two max. So let's go through what we're actually looking to do in the technique and how this is going to be different from a chip shot. The first thing would be, I now really want the ball pretty much directly under my sternum. If you remember with the chip, we want it a little bit back of the sternum. So I want that ball pretty much under my sternum, which is going to appear that it's pretty close to the middle of my heels. And I still want a little bit of weight on my lead side. But that ball position now means that we're not going to have a huge amount of shaft lean. There will be a little bit, but not a huge amount. So I feel that that ball is a little bit more centered relative to me. I'm also gonna stand pretty much with the golf club sold out. I'm not gonna really gonna raise the handle too much and get the toe down on this particular shot. And on this particular demonstration explanation here, we're going through what I would class as a basic pitch. 
Um, we will cover a little bit in a moment about how we would change that technique, but this is how I would hit a basic pitch. Now, the main difference between a chip and a pitch is how I start to use a little bit of hand and arm action. My chip shot was very much controlled with the shoulders, as we kind of said, that was a, a shoulder back and shoulder through movement. A pitch shot is going to start to introduce a little bit of arm fold, arm rotation, and a little bit of wrist set. So we're starting to get a little closer to what we'd actually do in the full golf swing. Full golf swing, we would tend to have some arm rotations and full wrist set. Now, those things aren't going to be done excessively, but I'm going to start to allow my forearms to rotate and I'm going to start to allow my wrists to hinge. So we're going to get a little bit more movement through the hands and the arms. And as we do that, we start to have a little bit more movement in the body to support that movement of the golf club. So you can see here I'm finishing in a very, very different position to what I do with that chip shot. I've got a little bit more body rotation. You'll notice that my trail heel is beginning to lift from the ground. All these things will depend a little bit on how far I'm trying to hit the ball but we can start to see how that length of swing and that style of shot is changing as we use a different technique here. So let's go ahead and hit one. I've got my 56. So I want that ball to kind of land just on the green and probably a little left of the flag because it, uh, it certainly looks like it's gonna break a little bit to the right. Okay, and you can see there, landed on the green broke certainly a lot from left to right. And look at that finished position compared to where I was for my chip shot. Very, very different, a lot more rotated. You can see how the clubs got through a little bit more into the finished position. And again, that club being there is because on the way through, there's a little bit more movement in my hands and my arms. I'm starting to use my forearms and I'm starting to use my wrists a little bit more through that shot. When we're looking at contact in the ground, when you're hitting these shots, the club has to make contact with the ground. It's, it's never going to be a good result if the club doesn't. So what we're really looking for you to do is get the sole of the golf club. That's where the, the loft is typically written. And we're looking for you to try and get that sole to land pretty much on the ground where the ball is. And as I'm making these practice swings, I'm just starting to get that club to land exactly where I want it to land. Now, if that flag was a little further on the green, all I do is I do the same little motion but I'll make it slightly longer. We get a little bit more height, we get a little bit more carry, and that ball is now rolling a little bit past the flag. But again, the motion was very similar, and you can see how the ball flight was much, much higher. So hopefully you can see there quite a few differences between the chip and the pitch in terms of what we're expecting the ball to do, how we create our setup, and then how we create our motion. The pitch shot which we're going through here is by far a little bit more complicated because we can use this kind of motion right up to sort of 40, 50 yards. And like I said a moment ago, we'd ideally want to have the ability to change that flight a little bit more. So that setup there was to give me what we class as a basic shot. Ultimately, we're not really gonna cover it too much in this particular video, but we would want to be able to have the ball back in our stance, hit some lower shots. We'd like to be able to open the face, hit some higher shots. We'd like to change the release pattern a little bit. And this is where we start to get into the kind of real details of short game in terms of how do we actually change the flight to give us different results. But the real purpose of this video is to explain to you what I see as the differences between a chip shot and a pitch shot. And in summary, a chip shot is played from very, very close to the green when we only want the ball to carry a short distance. And I would tend to use one technique with a variety of clubs. When I'm pitching, I'm tending to use one to two of my wedges and I want the ball to have more time through the air and less time on the ground. And I really want to try and vary my technique to give me the desired outcome rather than changing the golf club. I hope that makes sense. Right, we're just gonna finish up with a quick demonstration. And this is really kind of, I guess, one of the most important messages when we're talking about short game. We can go through the theory, we can run through exactly the setup and the technique, but it really comes down to you as the golfer on the golf course seeing the shot that you want to hit. We're in this situation, we've just talked about a pitch shot, I hit a nice first pitch shot there to about two feet, and that was, I'd be very, very happy with that. But, same situation, if I took my seven iron, there's nothing to stop me playing a chip shot from here. So there's my chip shot set up, much closer, ball back, weight forward. 
and yeah, it's not quite made it onto the green. And that's probably the reason why I wouldn't play that shot. However, what you can see here is that I could still play a chip shot from there. I'm not landing it on the green, but I'm still landing that ball within, you know, sort of four to five paces of where I'm standing. I'm still wanting that ball to spend more time on the ground. So once we understand the difference between the two shots, you can use a variety of them from a variety of different situations and there's no rules. You don't have to play a pitch from here and a chip from there. You can do whatever you want. But the key thing is, understand the differences, understand the setups, the techniques, what the ball will do. And once you do that and you practice those, you can then make educated decisions on the golf course. So that's the real key here. With the short game, we have to be able to understand the shot, execute the shot, and then make the correct decision. The decision is individual to you. It might be different to what I play. It might be different to what your playing partners play. It's absolutely fine as long as you have a reason why you're playing that particular shot. From here, I would use a pitch all day because this grass is a little bit more sticky the ball's going to slow down a little bit and i didn't quite get the right distance that's why for me from here i would play a pitch shot but for you you might see it completely different and that is absolutely fine right hopefully that cleared up uh, some of the confusion that might be out there between chipping and pitching and the differences you, you're going to use both on the golf course you need to be using both you need to be comfortable with both because it's certainly going to help you get up and down more often and that can really tidy up a scorecard and help you shoot lower scores thanks for watching usual stuff is down below we'd love to hear your thoughts on this video give it a thumbs up if you felt it helped you and also, I would love to be a subscriber to the channel if you're not already. There is a link down in the description. Thanks for watching. We'll hopefully see you back here again soon.